Good morning, and welcome to our second ever virtual joint worship service between St. Mark Lutheran Church of Morristown and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Florham Park. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, my name is Pastor Bo Nelson. I'm pastor of both our congregations here, and we are so thankful for all of you that were able to gather with us. If you're either home by yourself or gathered around with your family, we hope that you are all healthy and well and have everything that you need. I am very thankful to have my wife Alexis here with me helping operate the camera and uh, do some other things in worship today. We were going to have some other folks actually here present with us to record this service, but after Governor Murphy told told everybody to really stay at home and uh, cut ourselves off from as many people as possible to flatten this curve, uh, we decided to do this a little differently and just uh, Alexis and I. It may be that next week we are just at our home instead of here so we don't need to be out on the road. But we are here today and we will begin with uh, confession and forgiveness. You should have received a bulletin in your email, if you receive email from uh, either of our congregations. Uh, the words may be on the screen. Uh, we'll see if that happens. But if not, just follow along to the best of your ability. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn from Evangelical Lutheran Worship, number 769, If You But Trust in God to Guide You. And again, uh, we thank uh, Arnie Osmondson and Roberta Vega, uh, members uh, from here from Good Shepherd, uh, leading us in worship songs this morning.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing together, Kyrie eleison, which means, Lord, have mercy. And especially in this season of Lent, this fourth Sunday in Lent, and in this time of uncertainty, this time of change and turmoil, it's especially important to pray and ask God to have mercy. So let us sing our Kyrie. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our two readings today, from the 23rd Psalm and Ephesians 5, since we couldn't have other people be with us, uh, I asked some folks to video themselves and uh, send them to me so we could include them in our service. So we have the Jepson girls reading the 23rd Psalm, is our Old Testament reading today, and uh, Miss uh, Ingrid Davidson is reading our New Testament reading from Ephesians 5. Let us hear the readings of the word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You, you in anoint my head with oil and my cup is roll, running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament reading is from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 to 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
our gospel today is from John chapter 9. It's the story of a man who was born blind who, because of Jesus, is now able to see. I'm reading it today from the message version uh, by Eugene Peterson. It's the Bible in Contemporary Language. And it's actually very similar to the typical traditional uh, version of scripture that we use uh, in worship on Sundays from the New Revised Standard Version. But it just simplifies it a little bit. So hear this gospel now from Mark chapter 9. Walking down the street, Jesus saw a blind man. He saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There's no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. He said this and then spit in the dust and made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes, and said, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. The man went and washed and saw. Soon the town was buzzing. His relatives and those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging were saying, why, isn't this the man we, know, we knew, who sat here and begged? Others said, it's him all right, but others objected. It's not the same man at all. It just looks like him. He said, it's me, the very one. They said, well, how did your eyes get opened? A man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. I did what he said. When I washed, I saw. So where is he? Oh, I don't know. They marched the man to the Pharisees. Now this day when Jesus made the paste and healed his blindness was the Sabbath. The Pharisees grilled him again on how he had come to see. He said, he put a clay paste on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, obviously this man can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others countered, how can a bad man do miraculous God-revealing things like this? There was a split in their ranks. They came back at the blind man. You're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? He said, he is a prophet. The Jews didn't believe it. Didn't believe the man was blind to begin with. So they called the parents of the man, now bright eyes at sight. They asked him, is this your son, the one you say was born blind? So how is it that he now sees? His parents said, we know he is our son, and we know he was born blind. But we don't know how he came to see. Having a clue about who opened his eyes. Why don't you ask him? He is a grown man, and he can speak for himself. Now his parents were talking like this, because they were intimidated by the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who took a stand that this was the Messiah, would be kicked out of the meeting place, the synagogue. That's why his parents said, ask him, he's a grown man. They called for the man back a second time, the man who had been blind, and told him, give credit to God, we know that this man is an imposter. 
He replied, I know nothing about that one way or the other, but I know one thing for sure. I was blind, and now I see. They said, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I've told you over and over, and you haven't listened. Why do you want to hear it again? Are you so eager to become his disciples? With that, they jumped all over him. You might be a disciple of that man, but we're disciples of Moses. We know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man even comes from. The man replied, this is amazing. You claim to know nothing about him, but the fact is, he opened my eyes. Now it's well known that God isn't at the beck and call of sinners, but listens carefully to anyone who lives in reverence and does his will. That someone opened the eyes of a man born blind, has never been heard of, ever. If this man didn't come from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. They said, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take that tone with us? Then they threw him out in the street. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and he went and found him. He asked him, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, Point him out to me, sir, so that I can believe in him. Jesus said, you're looking right at it. Don't you recognize my voice? Master, I believe, the man said, and worshipped him. Jesus then said, I came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear, so that those who have never seen will see and those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind. Some Pharisees overheard him and said, Does that mean you're calling us blind? Jesus said, If you were really blind, you would be blameless. But since you claim to see everything so well, you're accountable for every fault and failure. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, we praise you and give you thanks for this time to gather together in this virtual way to praise you, to hear your word, to pray on behalf of the world, on behalf of our loved ones. We ask, Lord, that you would give us courage and strength for the days ahead. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I had quite a few conversations this week. I have been trying to call and or text members of our con- both of our congregations and going through the list and calling folks, especially those who uh, may not have loved ones nearby, who might uh, be in more vulnerable state. But my intent is to get through to everybody, so if you haven't yet heard from me, I promise that you will uh, in the coming days. In one of those conversations that I had, though, uh, the conversation ended with the man saying that he had a conversation with someone this week. And they were talking about, well, there are, it just seems like with this virus and this disease that it's very biblical and maybe you know maybe this could could be the end and my response to him which 
was actually a response that I gave to someone else uh, who saw me in my collar in the store a few days ago and asked me the same thing. If I thought this was the end, and my response, well, just like R.E.M. said, it's the end of the world as we know it, but not the end. Just the end of the world as we know it. Because the world that existed last week, the week before that, doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's in the past. It's lost, long gone. You might even say that it's dead. That world has died. It doesn't exist anymore. Even if the coronavirus, COVID-19, were to be completely eradicated today, we still can't really go back to that world. We've all been changed in one way, shape, or form. We've been doing things differently, learning differently, teaching differently, working differently, connecting with others differently, doing virtual church. We weren't doing most of those things two weeks ago, a week ago. Yes, it's the end of the world as we know it. In our story today, in our gospel, we encounter a man who was born blind. He didn't become blind at a certain point or because of a disease or something like that. He was born blind. He was born uh, differently abled. He was born without being able to see light and color. And he had to figure out how to live life in his own body and in his own skin, as we all do, just differently. And he did that for his whole life. So was the man's world, was, the, a, was it a bad world? That this world that this man lived in? No, it was just different. It was a different world. The story opens with the disciples, however, making an assumption that the reason that this man was blind was because either he sinned or his parents sinned. They thought there was some behavior, something that somebody did to cause this physical uh, physical disability. Jesus said that's not the question. That's, that's not what it's about. And especially in John's Gospel. We're talking the Gospel of John, remember? We're in here in this Gospel for a few weeks. And in the Gospel of John, sin has nothing to do with moral rectitude. Thing, doing things right or wrong. Sin in John's Gospel is about not believing. Not believing that God sent Jesus. That Jesus is the one sent by God. That's, in John's Gospel, that's the only definition of sin. Not believing. Not believing. Trusting, not being in relationship with God, with Jesus, the one who sent. So they see this man, this man who was blind, who lived this life without light, without color, without being able to see in the typical way, didn't live life in the typical way. He was blind no light coming into his eyes. And Jesus wanted to make the power of God known. And so Jesus took some dirt. Just dirty mud. And he mixed it with some spit. I'm not going to spit in here. 
rubbed it together, he made a paste. And he took that paste and he rubbed it on the man's eyes. Alexis, can I do that to you? Just kidding. Rubbed it on the man's eyes. And he told the man, go, wash in a pool of Siloam. And so he went and he washed. And as he was washing, He realized that for the first time, first time ever in his life, he could see. He could see. His world was changed. He could now see light and color and people and it was a whole new world for him. A whole new perspective. So the world that he had been living in which was not a bad world, which was a different world, that was gone. It no longer existed. You might even say that man who was born blind no longer existed. That he himself was dead. And a new man, a new person, was raised by Jesus. Through this muddy paste and this water, this washing, he was raised to new life. A new creation came into being. He could see. He's even said in uh, one of his testimonies, the words that... Uh, were a significant part of the hymn Amazing Grace. I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see. He was dead. Or, the blind man is dead. This new creation, this man who is no longer blind, is alive. It's unfortunate we don't, this man doesn't actually get a name. It's like in last week's story, The Woman at the Well, Samaritan woman. She doesn't have a name, but uh, we know their stories. So we have we have this man and his world, his world which has been changed completely. And as, I don't know about you, but as I've been looking at what we're going through right now, it seems like our world is, our, our world is changing. As I said at the beginning, the world from a week ago, two weeks ago, has gone. It's dead. It doesn't exist anymore. But we're not at the newness yet. We're not at what will be. We can't say we were dead and now we are alive again. We're somewhere in the middle. It's like this caterpillar. This, uh, the man who was born blind be this caterpillar. Living his life. Was the life of the caterpillar a bad life? No. It was just caterpillar life. But at some point in his life, or her life, the caterpillar makes a change. And the caterpillar says, all right, it is time. And so the caterpillar makes for itself this chrysalis. goes into this chrysalis, it hangs itself from a tree. It finds a tree limb or a plant limb. And it makes this chrysalis. And when it's inside this chrysalis, the caterpillar dissolves. 
it liquefies. So there is no more caterpillar. The caterpillar in there is pretty much dead. No longer exists. This caterpillar, bye bye see ya, doesn't exist anymore. And unfortunately, we do know, because some people have uh, experimented, they've cut these things open, and they see that it is just green goo. Green, disgusting goo. Kind of like the disgusting, muddy paste that Jesus used to bring newness to the man. Gross, messy, disgusting. Just like what's inside of there. Gross, messy, disgusting. This is where we are at right now. The world that we lived in no longer exists. There is no more caterpillar for us. The caterpillar world that we had a week ago, two weeks ago, it's dissolved now. And it has been messy, hasn't it? This past week has been so messy. People having to figure out how to do life a different way. People actually dying. People coming down with this coronavirus. Our governor even saying that it's in the hundreds now. It will likely be in the thousands here in New Jersey before it, that curve is completely flattened. There's been so much fear and anxiety on all of that, the death, the disease, the pain, the fear, the anxiety, all that is in here. All of that is the mud, is the goo that God is going to use to make something new. Because this is what God does. This is what Jesus did in our story, right? In order to take the blind man and give him sight, he used the muddy dirt. It not, wasn't a clean process, was it? This is not a clean process. Our lives have not been a clean process this last week. There has been pain, there has been sadness, there has been hopelessness and despair fear and anxiety, actual death. But these are the things that God takes, that God takes and uses. God uses to do the work that he actually wants to do. Now, there are some people that are going to say that God is at work in this coronavirus. Some might even have the audacity to say that this is God's punishment on, on humanity. I'm not gonna even go anywhere near that. That's not the God that I know. We also can't jump off the other end and say God is absolutely nowhere in this because we don't know. We don't know the mind of God. We don't know where God really is at work in all of what's going on. But we do know what God does. We do know what God promises to do. And that is to take the messes of our lives, to take the goo, the mud, the death, the pain, the hardships of our lives, bring newness. Butterfly life. This is what
what God promises to do to bring resurrection. Because we don't know what it's going to look like. But many of us have already experienced this, have we not? Experienced the death and resurrection of Jesus in our lives many times. We've gone through these difficult times. And did God leave us there? Did God leave us in the goo, in the mess? No, God brought us to new life. Brought us to where we are today. People are dying. People are grieving. Grieving loss on so many different levels. For some people, it's grieving death of loved ones. For some people, it's fear of their loved one's mortality, that they're going to catch this, catch this virus. But for other people, students, children, they're upset, grieving the fact that they can't hang out with their friends. They can't play the sports that will allow them to get scholarships in the next two years. Grieving the concerts and the musicals that they're not going to be able to participate in. Grieving not being able to go to the prom. Now, these things, death and playing sports, are a little different in weight, but it doesn't make them less important. It's still grief. It's still pain. And it's all what's going, what's going on in here. It's all the goo. It's all the messiness. That God is going to take to bring new life. And this is what we hold on to, brothers and sisters. We hold on to hope. We hold on to the fact that that's what God is going to do. God is going to bring new life. This morning, as Alexis and I were sitting drinking our coffee, we were talking a little bit about what my sermon was going to be today, and, and I was talking about the butterflies, and, and she looked up, looked up on one of our shelves and noticed a wedding present that we had received uh, nearly a year ago. Uh, Easter, April 12th, is going to be our one-year uh, wedding anniversary. Hopefully we'll be able to still get some nice takeout. But we received this as a wedding present, and we just recently unpacked it since we've been finally uh, unpacking some of our rooms. And this is a wedding present we received from a friend, and we haven't put a picture in here yet. But as she was looking up at this frame, this frame, surrounded by the butterflies, made her think about all of the memories that will go in here. Made her think about the anniversaries that we're going to be celebrating. Made her think about the babies that God is going to give us. Some pictures we can put in here. Think about the good, amazing memories that we will have. That's hope. And that's what we cling to. We cling to hope because we trust God that God will give us goodness again, that there will be good times again. But what about for right now? while we're still here, while we're still in the chrysalis, not knowing what that future was going to be. For that we have the psalm that the 
Jeff and girls read earlier. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. We have everything that we need. You have enough toilet paper. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. At home, in the comforts of our home, we are still. We've slowed down. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Where is God going to be leading us in this time of slowness and stillness while we're staying put in our homes, as our governor has told us to do? Even though I walk through the darkest valley, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is what we're doing right now. This We are in the melting downness of the world that was. And we're waiting for what is yet to come. But we are walking through those dark valleys. God never promised us a rose garden. Scripture has never once said that there will be no suffering, that there will be no pain or hardship. What it does say is, even though I walk through the dark valleys, I fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I don't like that translation because that's an inappropriate translation. The word isn't follow. Goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. The word in Hebrew is actually pursue. Like a predator pursues its prey. So what this is saying is that God's goodness and mercy is going to pursue us. Even if we try to evade it. Even if we don't want to look for it. Even if we don't think that God is present. God's goodness and mercy is going to pursue us all the days of our life, and we are going to dwell in the house of the Lord our whole life long. To dwell in the house of the Lord is to be in God's presence. So brothers and sisters, two things, two messages that I want you to take away from this. First, is that that's coming. There are going to be memories to put in our photo frames. There is new life coming. And two, while we are in the midst of it, while we are with our families a whole lot more than we are used to be doing, while we are stressing and trying to figure out how to do our lives differently, how to do work differently. We know that in the midst of all of that challenge and trouble, that God is with us, and that God is holding us, and that God will get us through this. That God will never abandon us. This is our word for today, brothers and sisters. Let us cling to hope. Let us cling to the presence of God ever and always in our lives. Amen. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, this is the time where we would normally collect an offering. Uh, we will be hearing uh, videos from both of our congregational presidents that will be reminding us about uh, offerings and uh, envelopes and, and such. But I want to lift up during this offering time uh, two organizations that uh, need support right now. Organizations that we, both of our congregations, have supported in different ways. Uh, the first one is the Interfaith Food Pantry. They had uh, reached out to us and said that they're running out of food. People need food. So uh, if you go to the grocery store and you can buy some extra groceries and drop it off at the Interfaith Food Pantry, that would be really wonderful. If you need that number and address, uh, you can reach out to myself or, or others in the congregation. Uh, or make a donation. Go online. The Interfaith Food Pantry uh, will take donations so that they can purchase the food. The other organization is Nourish New Jersey, which uh, provides, it was the, formerly the Community Soup Kitchen of Morristown, and they are continuing to provide meals every day for folks that come there. And they're, they're also needing to make sure that they can continue to support people. So if you have the ability to send a little bit their way uh, and help them continue to feed people, that would be a really wonderful offering that you could make during this time as we continue to support our neighbors. And now we turn to the prayers of the people. Hear our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick. Support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. We especially pray for all of those who are required and have the privilege and ability to work including but not limited to teachers and students. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases, <coughs> malaria, dengue, HIV and AIDS, and others that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbors. We pray for those who put themselves in harm's way, not only now but at all times. Police, firefighters, and all first responders. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession. Caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, close quarters, and other restrictions. 
Protect and guard all those who must travel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth. Call to spread misinformation and act of justice so that all your family may know healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. At this time, you are invited to pray out loud or silently any prayers you wish to lift before God. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, at this uh, time, we uh, have a couple of videos, uh, one from Glenn Durner, Council President, of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and from Bob Burkhart, the council president of St. Mark, uh, to bring greetings to you all from where, where they are at right now. I also want to add uh, my, own, my own word uh, to you all that um, if there is anything that you need, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, my number is uh, still as it, as it has been uh, in our directories and whatnot, uh, I will be continuing to reach out to you all as the time, time permits. Um, our churches and buildings remain closed until further notice. Uh, I do pray and ask that everybody can stay put as much as possible. It's tempting to go out and, and do whatever uh, the things that we like to do, but uh, if we can just stay put, you know, go for a walk, sure, uh, but try to stay put as much as possible. These services will probably uh, be uh, happening from the parsonage next week and, and going forward. We won't even come out here to church. Um, so uh, with that, I uh, turn it over to the videos from our council presidents. Hi, this is a short message from me, Bob Burkhart, representing the St. Mark Lutheran Church Council. We hope that you are all keeping safe and following the guidelines that seem to be changing every minute. We know that this is a difficult time for most people, and we hope that you will continue to pray for your neighbors and for all of the workers that are trying their best to keep the food supply line open and the medical workers especially who put their lives in danger every day. Things are not as normal at the church, but we do hope that the, for those of you who are able, you will be able to continue to give to our missions and soon you'll be receiving an email that gives you some information about making a donation through an online method that some of us have already signed up for. Please remember to check your email so that you can see any new notifications that are coming out about the prayer line that happens every day at noontime with Pastor Bo. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. 
Glenn and Olga Dov here. We just wanted to touch base and let you all know that we're thinking and praying for your safety and well-being. We know during a time of crisis, we all want to come together for one another and be there. But under these circumstances, we're not able to congregate, so we're going to have to rely on more technology like videos and emails. So trying not to inundate your inbox with emails, but do look for ones that we send out as far as ways that we will be able to stay in touch with you and upcoming opportunities to greet one another. We ask during this time that you do stay in touch with people in ways that you're able, whether it be a phone call, emails, but try and stay in touch. I know we all need that. During the times when the church has to be closed, we still want to be able to open up our doors as soon as it's safe and we're ready. We ask that you forward your offerings into us so that we are able to do that and meet our bills. We are also going to be sending out an email in order to have you be able to do direct deposit. It's safe, secure, and simple, and it might be uh, something that you would consider. So everybody be well. Hope to see you all soon, personally, not through video. And take care. God bless. Peace. And receive the final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn uh, based on Psalm 46, written by Martin Luther. Uh, Mighty fortress is our God. Uh, I invite you to take this hymn with you into your week and into your new world as we prepare. As we prepare for the world that is to come our lives that are is to come.
Christ is with us. Thanks be to God.